I said, that son of a bitch is running. I got him elected. So I don't, I'm not a big fan of his, and he's highly overrated. Well, the GOP primary rolling along as we head towards the first debate in August in Milwaukee here on Fox. Meantime, the favorable opinion of the top two uh, leaders in the prospective parties, pretty low, 33 percent, 32, uh, neither 36 uh, percent, but former President Trump has a commanding lead in the GOP primary, depending on the poll, could be 20, 25, sometimes 30 points. Let's bring in our panel, Ben Dominich, editor-at-large for The Spectator, host of the Ben Dominich podcast on Fox News Radio, Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and Byron York, chief political correspondent of The Washington Examiner. Okay, Ben, it, there's really not a clear path here for any one candidate besides the former president as of yet. We always talk it's early, but nobody's really stepping out and doing something different. Certainly not. And I think that, you know, you look at this race right now and you know, given the fact that the only numbers that we have from the second fundraising quarter, uh, you know, are positive for Ron DeSantis, it doesn't look like anybody else is rushing to tell us the numbers that they had, which would be an indication of some kind of alteration of the scenario. And also, you know, over the weekend, I was struck by just seeing that scene at the UFC 290 fight uh, in Las Vegas, where Donald Trump comes out with Dana White to Kid Rock's American Badass. He is hailed by all these different, you know, UFC fans and celebrities and the like. How do you overcome that as even an accomplished governor of Florida, someone who has hit all the marks when it comes to culture war issues, conservative priorities, et cetera. You know, those are all things that, you know, Ron DeSantis can claim, but does it matter when you're up against the man who is now the world's biggest celebrity? Leslie, what about that? Democrats, I mean, when you listen to all different pundits, they clearly want to run against former President Trump. So that is now a talking point for Governor DeSantis. But it hasn't moved his needle as of yet. No, I mean, he's been sending his wife out to campaign for him. That's not a really good look. You know, I, I think what happens is... Well, I think is, Casey DeSantis is a very good look. No, I, think, no, well, I think some Republicans would actually prefer her as the well, candidate. Well, I do, but I think it's a bad look for him because they're, they're not going to... She's not on the ballot yet, uh, that I know of. L look, when you when you have that personality... I can't disagree with Ben. Um, you know, that song, Cult of Personality. I, uh, Donald Trump embodies that, you know, and he has a cult-like following. Uh, how many of those people that are being polled are going to show up to vote for him? I don't know. I have a lot, and I know people are shocked by this, of Republican friends who, uh, they like Trump, but they don't want him to be president. They voted for him once or twice, but they're not going to vote for him again. And uh, they feel that a Ron DeSantis would be a better choice, but they just don't see, like you said, a path, even though it's a long way there. So I think that that bravado plays very well. Um, and it may pay, play well in the polling, but I think at the end of the day, Americans are going to say, I want decorum, I want security, and maybe they're going to hold their nose, if you will, and vote for Joe Biden. I don't or know, Byron. We heard again. that in 2015 and 2016, too. And I definitely hear Republicans in different circles say, you know, I love Trump policies, but I don't like all the chaos, I don't like the baggage. But then there are people saying they're coming after him for a reason. You know, those people say maybe they're coming after him because he shakes things up in Washington. And it's an even, even split here. As you look at these polls, he's got a commanding lead. All of the other candidates are waiting for something to happen. They don't know the magic formula to run against Trump. So far, there hasn't been one. They trail Trump from between 30 and 50 points in the national polls. And you just put your finger on something really important. The big dilemma facing all the candidates is they know that the Republican electorate approves of the policies Trump pursued as president, whether or not they want him to run again. They all uh, approve of what he did as president. So a candidate challenging Trump has to come out and say, well, you know, Trump was a great president and those are great policies to pursue on the White House, but it's time to move on. Meanwhile, Trump is there himself saying, what do you mean move on? Here I am. It's a very, very difficult position for anybody challenging Trump. All right. Turning to foreign policy, here are some GOP candidates on uh, Russia, Ukraine. 
Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after I win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. My former running mate likes to talk about solving it in a day. The, the only way you'd solve this war in a day is if you gave Vladimir Putin what he wanted. Russia said that after Ukraine, it's Poland and the Baltics. That is when we get into a world war. This is about preventing war. What we need to do is see that Russia has hit rock bottom. All weighing in, uh, but you have now this NATO summit in Lithuania. The Wall Street Journal uh, editorial saying a revived NATO comes to Vilnius. Bigger question concerns Ukraine after the war. The debate is underway over whether Ukraine should benefit from a formal Western security guarantee or perhaps join NATO. President Biden is cautious about membership, but the West has already decided that defending Ukraine from Russia is in its interest, hence the weapons supplies. And that's a real question, you know, this whole NATO question. Once you go down that road, an attack on a NATO member is an attack on anybody. It's a huge question. I don't think it should be taken unseriously. And unfortunately, I think to this point, you know, keep in mind, we never had a foreign policy debate last time around when it came to the 2020 election. I would like to hear all these candidates weigh in on this in a more serious manner. You know, but I also think that, you know, the considerations when it comes to, comes to NATO has to also consider what nations ought to remain in NATO. We saw this whole conflagration over Turkey in the last 72 hours plus. And one of the things that I think is, is very clear is that Turkey has not made itself a clear ally of the interests of the West. It's been something that I think has been at odds in very uh, key ways. You know, a country like Sweden makes more sense within NATO to a certain extent. When it comes to the Ukraine argument, I think that one thing that we should respect is that having this conversation at this point before these people are in office is very important. We can't wait until they get to the presidency to know what they believe. It'll be on our list of questions in August. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.